Now here, we have a couple of different transformations. Again, I'm gonna first start by drawing my sine graph. And I do recommend you do it on paper. This is pi over two. This is pi. This is three pi over two. And this is two pi. And um, this is one. And this is minus one. Now we have, this is inside. So we have a horizontal transformation. If you remember, vertical transformations do like exactly what we expect. They multiply because we're multiplying, right? Yes. Here, this is a horizontal transformation and horizontal transformations actually do the opposite. So instead of multiplying all my x values by two, I'm dividing all my x values by two. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, zero is still going to stay zero. That's for sure. But I'm going to take this pi over two, and I'm going to divide it by two, which gives me pi over four. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm going to take my pi, and I'm going to divide it by two. So here, this gives me pi over two. And then I'm going to take this three pi over two. I'll just put it up here. And that becomes three pi over four. And I'm going to take my two pi divided by two. And this becomes pi. So what really just happened? What happened was I compressed my graph because normally, I'll try to see if I can do it up here in somewhat of a, so let's say that's my original graph. And uh, let's say that right here was two pi. Now what really happened is I compressed it. Instead of stretching it like I do vertically, I'm compressing it. So if this is pi, which is my end value right now, what I've done is I've done this. I've, I've pushed it in, it's in half. And if I continue on, notice I get two cycles, two cycles between zero and two pi, right? Yeah. If I look at the green, I've now got two cycles. If that was three X, I would have three cycles between zero and two pi. Okay, so it's, it's basically moving it faster. But the way to do it is just divide all my x values by two. So when I have outside, I multiply by three. When I have inside, I divide by two. My green is really just sine of two x. Do you know what happens with that negative? Now I have to take care of this negative sign. You flip it over the x. Remember that if this part right here was positive, now it would be negative with that negative sign, right? So where is sine of 2x positive? Well, it's positive above the x-axis. All these values here are positive sign. But if I, if I put a negative sign in front of it, what should happen is they all should become negative. It's actually flipping over the x-axis. This now is negative sine of 2x and it flipped over the x-axis. Things to notice, when it's positive, sine always starts going up in a positive direction. When it's negative, it starts going down in the negative direction. A normal sine graph would always start at zero. Notice how it's always going positive. These are just representations of the unit circle. So if I start, say, here on my unit circle, and I go in the positive direction, all the values between here and here are all gonna be positive sign because sign is the Y values. So we can see that between zero and pi here to here, right? It's all yes. positive. All, all I'm doing is taking this unit circle and putting it on an XY coordinate system.